Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the English Like a Native podcast. I'm your host Anna and today we are talking about teeth whitening. ka -ching! Now for those of you who are watching the video, I'm smiling right now. I am doing a big toothy smile E showing my teeth when I smile. E I'm baring my teeth. <laughs> Why? Well, you might notice that my teeth are quite white. And that's because I've been doing some home teeth whitening. So teeth whitening is a cosmetic procedure. But I'm covering it today because there are some very interesting words and phrases that come up when talking about teeth in general. And hopefully everyone listening has teeth, or at least everyone had teeth at some point, even if you don't have any anymore. And we all hopefully brush our teeth and deal with our teeth a couple of times per day. So this is going to be an interesting lesson for everyone particularly those who are learning English, which is what this podcast is for. It's to help you to improve your English and expand your vocabulary. So first of all, with teeth whitening, why do we do it? Well, I think the single answer to that is because we want our teeth to look nice. We have this idea that straight white teeth is something we should strive for. It's like it, this is the gold standard of teeth. A, a perfect, flawless smile with straight, very white teeth. In the UK, we often call this a Hollywood smile. And that's because many actors who become successful Hollywood actors all have very straight, very white teeth. And there are some celebrities who famously had quite crooked, yellowed teeth who later in their career actually went and got the Hollywood smile. David Bowie is the first one that comes to mind. And so I guess you could call it vanity, but I do want to talk about that a little bit later on. So it's all about appearance. That's the only reason really you would have your teeth whitened. But you do have to consider, why are your teeth yellow? Your teeth have an outer layer called enamel. You'll find that a lot of toothpaste brands offer to strengthen and repair your enamel. Your enamel is very important. It's the shield to your teeth. And once the enamel wears away or becomes damaged, then It could mean that your teeth are exposed to infection, to rotting, you know. And the thing is with enamel, it's very white. When it's thick, it's white. However, the layer underneath is called dentine and this is not white, this is yellow. In some cases, our teeth are yellow because Our enamel has thinned either through age, because that happens naturally as part of the aging process, or because of a high acidic diet. And that could be acidic drinks as well as acidic food. So your enamel thins and it starts to show the dentine underneath. So the color moves from white into yellow. So that's one reason why your teeth could be yellow. In this case, Teeth whitening will not work because the problem is thin or no enamel. In many cases, especially in younger people, yellow teeth is simply staining. Especially those of us who have a very heavy tea or coffee addiction. Or those of us who eat lots of staining foods like curries. You know, that can make your teeth quite yellow. I went through a period of eating a lot of turmeric and it's got really great benefits, especially the anti-inflammatory effect that it has. 
inflammation in the body is one of the most serious issues that we mostly ignore but it can cause joint problems it can cause all sorts of health issues so bringing down inflammation in a natural way is a great way to boost your health span to make you live longer and feel fantastic turmeric turmeric i never i'm always mispronouncing that word i want to say turmeric but i think it's turmeric <laughs> Yes, I teach pronunciation, but some words, some words escape me. And turmeric is one of those that I just find a little bit tricky. So turmeric, turmeric, turmeric is one of those foods that naturally reduces inflammation. However, why am I talking about it? It's really staining. I remember, and this was maybe seven years ago, six, seven years ago, I was about to do a live stream on video and I was wolfing down a salad. To wolf something down is to eat it very quickly as if you're ravenously hungry. I was wolfing down my salad because I only had a few minutes before my my stream and I'd put some raw fresh turmeric in turmeric, turmeric. <laughs> I must look this up in fact I'm gonna do it right now so I put this fresh stuff raw stuff in my salad I'm just looking on my phone I'm looking on google for to turmeric I ate this salad and I started the video hi guys opening my mouth really wide how is everyone today we're doing a live stream and as I caught sight of myself in the camera, I was horrified because I had a really, really yellowy orange tongue and stained teeth from this, from this turmeric. 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 There we go. I will remember now. Turmeric. Turmeric. Tur. Okay, so this is a trick that I actually advise everyone to use. You take the correct pronunciation of something and you try to attach it to a word that sounds similar. So I say turmeric as my mispronunciation of this word. The correct pronunciation is turmeric. So I'm going to take that initial vowel, er, ter, 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 and think of a word that starts with those sounds, ter, turn. So I'm going to think about turning the turmeric round turn the turmeric turn the turmeric turn the turmeric i'm twisting my finger here guys with that physicalization and that repetition of turn the turmeric turn the turmeric every time now i want to say the word turmeric i'm going to turn my finger i'm going to think about turning and that will give me the right lead into the pronunciation so i ate raw turmeric and I'm twisting my finger every time I say this now. I ate raw turmeric and yes, my live stream was just hilarious with me speaking with a very orange, bright orange mouth and teeth. So I learnt my lesson and now I, I rarely eat turmeric. Mm. Oh, that's worked. Okay, so staining is the main reason that people have teeth that are not so white. And this doesn't have to be solved with teeth whitening. You can remove a lot of staining at home using a more abrasive toothpaste. And you can also, and you should, every six months or so, go to have a proper, what we call a hygiene clean at your dental surgery or go and see a hygienist. Make sure you see a good hygienist pay good money to go and have a hygiene clean every six months and it helps to keep your teeth in tip-top condition and it's not just your teeth it's your gums as well that makes a big difference I started to get a little bit self-conscious recently because my front teeth had started to about halfway down really show signs of staining in a way that I've never seen before and one of them in particular started to look like it was going 
translucent, which means see-through. Like I could see if I put my tongue or my finger behind the tooth, I could see the pink of my finger through the tooth. So my tooth was com- becoming see-through, which is a sign of your the mineralization in your enamel breaking down. So your enamel thinning, which is at 41 years old, thin enamel is not something I was expecting to to have to deal with. So I went to my dentist and I said, I'm concerned about this. And they said, I think the majority of your concern is just staining. I think it could be solved when you go and have your hygiene clean. And sure enough, I went to see the hygienist and whew, it made a huge difference. I was really surprised, even though I was actually using an abrasive toothpaste occasionally at home. But I have picked up a nasty coffee habit lately. Coffee with coconut milk. Oh, I love it. And this, alongside my tea habit, has caused this this rapid staining of my teeth. So the hygienist sorted that out for me. And then I started using like a remineralizing toothpaste. I think it was Sensodyne Mineral Boost toothpaste. I was using that on a regular basis and I upped the amount of calcium rich foods and drink that I was having in my diet to help try and replace any of the minerals that I was losing. And so those are the things you can do, the steps that you can take. Now I'm doing teeth whitening, even though I was happy with my hygiene clean, I'm doing teeth whitening simply because I was offered a free take home kit as part of my my membership to my private dental surgery. So with the membership, they said you can get some free home teeth whitening. Uh, So I was like, yes, I'll have that, please. Let's do that. So I've done it just for half the time and I think my teeth look nicely white. I think if they went any whiter, they would maybe look a little bit weird. What do you think? I'm smiling again. Right, so the things to consider if you are thinking about teeth whitening. So first of all, I would always go and see a dentist. Find out whether your teeth are just stained or whether it's actually thin enamel. A dentist would be able to tell you that. And so if you have thin enamel, teeth whitening would be terrible because it would make your teeth very painful. It would potentially damage the enamel you have left and it wouldn't have an outcome. There would be no white teeth at the end. So that's something to consider. You'd also want to consider whether it would suit your lifestyle because there are things you have to give up in order to whiten your teeth successfully. And you also want to consider the price. Now I've been very lucky. I managed to get my teeth whitening for free But if I were to pay, then a home teeth whitening kit, I believe, is about £200 if it comes from your dentist. You can also have an on-the-day, one-off treatment. You have to go in to see a professional to have it done. And I think that costs more like £600. It's very expensive. And they use a machine and very, very strong gel to whiten your teeth. Or... You can go for the cheaper option, which is to order whitening strips off the internet. Now, personally, I do not recommend this. I think it's really dangerous to just randomly buy some strips from the internet, hoping that it's a good quality product and that it's not going to damage your teeth. I think your teeth, you know, apart from when you're a child and you know you've got your adult teeth to come. So we talk about our baby teeth and then our adult teeth. So as a child, you have all your baby teeth and they fall out and you're mostly excited about losing your baby teeth because in the UK, every time you lose a a tooth, you put it under your pillow and the tooth fairy comes when you sleep and she replaces it with money. (laughs) Fantastic. Um, So as a a child, losing your teeth is, is something to look forward to and then getting your adult teeth come through is quite exciting too. But once you lose your adult teeth, or once you damage them, then that's it. And that's quite scary. So treat your teeth with respect. 
look after them because you're not going to get any more. The only way to get new teeth after that is to go through painful and expensive procedures to have implants. I mean, I say painful, I've never had it done because I'm a wimp. I do have one tooth that had to be removed at the back here and the intention was to have the tooth removed and then replace it with an implant. But I'm such a wimp. Having the tooth removed was really painful. and I just thought I can't even imagine them having to cut my gum, drill into my jawbone to put in a peg to then put in a tooth. I just, I was like, no, thank you. It's at the back of my mouth. I can cope without it. Nobody sees it. So no. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm a wimp, but I have my limits for sure. So those are the things you need to consider and and those are the options you've got. The very expensive one day whitening, the take home teeth whitening kits, which usually take about two weeks or the strips, which are not recommended. So the procedure for going with the home kit is you have to go and see your dentist and your dentist checks your teeth and says, yes, you're a good candidate for teeth whitening. Your teeth will respond well, probably, to teeth whitening. So then they will take impressions of your teeth. So to take impressions, which basically means they make a mold of your teeth, which they then send to a lab where someone makes trays for you. So to take these impressions, they have to use these big trays that they fill with this soft putty that they then shove into your mouth and you have to bite down and hold while, until it sets. The putty has to set. To set means it has to go hard. And so you're there with this putty filled tray in your mouth and it, oh my goodness, it's probably my least favorite thing that I've ever had done in the dental chair. You know, needles are horrible, fillings are horrible, extractions are horrible, root canals are horrible. But for me, I really hate having impressions taken. And actually, I really don't like having x-rays taken either. The reason is, with this putty-filled tray, it's such a mouthful. It's so big. And this putty is so far back. In I've got a very small mouth. The inside of my mouth is tiny. And it fills right up to the back of your throat. And I have a very sensitive kind of what we call a gag reflex. So your gag reflex is your reaction to something touching the back of your throat. It makes you gag. That's to gag. I won't do it too often. I don't want to make anyone feel unwell. That's a gag. Okay. So we use gag in a number of different ways, actually. If you gag someone, oh, you need to gag him. It means you either need to stop them from talking if someone's going to reveal a big secret that you don't want anyone to know, then you might have to gag them. You might pay them some money to gag them. But to physically gag someone is to shove something in their mouth to stop them from talking. So they're like, <laughs> they've been gagged. People who've been kidnapped in the movies, they're often shown to be gagged and bound. Gagged and bound. And so, gag someone, metaphorically gag them to stop them from talking. You can gag the action of gagging. I often have a sensitive gag reflex. So having something at the back of my throat makes me want to start gagging. And so I have to breathe and think, meditate, go to my happy place to stop myself from getting in a panic and starting my gag reflex. If that happens, if I get to that point of gagging, then, then I would just feel too sick to continue. Now, they take the mold, they take the impression of your teeth and they send them off and the trays are made. So your trays are the little plastic replicas of your teeth which you then slot on top of your teeth and once they're on because they're translucent they're see-through you can see through them they are transparent then 
you know, no one can really tell you've got them on other than you might speak in a slightly funny way. I always do when I've got mine on. I always sound a bit funny. I find my mouth gets quite dry when I wear my trays. So you take your trays home. They're normally fitted in the dentist. They make sure everything's comfortable and that it fits properly. And then you take them home with your gel. Often the gel should be kept in the fridge to keep it cool, to make it last longer. And then each night you have to put some gel into your trays and put them in and leave them on for a little while. Now, what I'm going to do is read to you some of the instructions I had to read and sign off on when I was taking my trays home. So the first thing that I was given was a form that said, there are a few things that you should know about teeth whitening. We cannot guarantee the results. So (laughs) this is them covering their backs. To cover your back means that you make sure no one can come back and blame you for something. Okay, they are covering their backs so you can't hit them or stab them in the back. Right, so we can't guarantee the results as everyone's teeth will respond differently to the course of treatment. Number two, you may experience some sensitivity. Now, this is a really big thing. Sensitivity and teeth whitening pretty much go hand in hand. I don't know anyone who's had their, excuse me, frog in my throat I don't know anyone who's had their teeth whitened who hasn't experienced sensitivity on some level. So you may experience some sensitivity, some cases more extreme than others, but there are ways to combat the sensitivity in order to help you progress comfortably with the tooth whitening. If you experience sensitivity, please stop the treatment and use Sensodyne toothpaste. Number three, I normally say the whitening lasts about 18 months. But obviously, this depends on your habits, tea, coffee, etc. And also on your teeth as an individual. I normally recommend a mini top-up treatment, one or two applications, after approximately six months. This should normally be done a few days after a hygiene clean because again, hygiene clean and teeth whitening, they go hand in hand. They work well together. Then it goes on to tell me about the procedure of using these trays to whiten my teeth. It says first, floss. Now we should all be flossing every day anyway but it's good to be reminded because some people are a little bit lax when it comes to flossing. So first, floss and brush your teeth, preferably with Sensodyne toothpaste and mouth rinse. Then load the trays as instructed. Place a small amount of gel in each tooth compartment of the trays. You have to put a little blob of gel within each space for each tooth. The bigger the tooth, the more gel you will need. Then place the tray with the gel into your mouth and gently push on the trays to position them. Uh -uh. So you get them right in, nice and snug against your teeth. Then it says, be sure to remove any excess from the gum margins. The margins are the edges. And do this with a cotton wool swab. I find that interesting. I don't call them swabs. I call them cotton wool buds. Cotton wool buds. Or ear ear buds, I call them. Although you're always advised never to put a cotton wool bud in your ear. But obviously, I grew up calling them ear buds. So you can guess what I used to do with cotton wool buds. Yes. Stick them in my ear and twizzle them around. (laughs) It's so satisfying. And then... Ooh, throw that away. But yeah, it's really bad. It pushes wax deep down into your ear. And in some cases, if you push too hard, you could do damage to your eardrum. But that's another podcast episode. Today we're talking about teeth. So you use a cotton wool swab, 
Be careful not to leave any gel on your gums as this could result in, it could cause, it could result in irritation of the gums. Oh dear, we don't want that. In the event that you do experience gum irritation, please stop the treatment and apply, here they've said Vit-E oil to your gums. Now Vit-E, people write it in different ways, but it's vitamin, short for vitamin, vitamin E oil. Only proceed with the treatment once the gums have healed fully. Number six, do not apply any gel to the very back molars. Now, the back teeth, the big ones, these are called molars, your molars. You also have the sharp ones on kind of either side of your front teeth. Like if you're thinking you've got your two front teeth and then the next two along and then the next two along are sharp. <laughs> Talking funny because I've got my fingers in my mouth. The sharp ones are called your canines, your canines. And then if I remember correctly, your front ones are your incisors, incisors. So your molars, your canines, your incisors. Let's hope I'm not wrong on that. Okay, so uh, it says you only need to apply gel to your visible teeth, essentially. And then it talks about the fact that the gel should last for a week. Oh, maybe I've not been liberal enough with my gel because I've already done a week and I still have lots of gel left. <laughs> maybe I should be putting more on. And it says you can stop the treatment if you feel your teeth have responded sufficiently. Well, I'm showing my teeth again. I think I'm going to stop my treatment because I'm happy with this shade of white. I don't think I need to go any lighter than this. Then it says if you struggle, oh, I've got an itchy eyelid. That's bizarre. How often do you get an itchy eyelid? Not very often. Oh, that's weird. Also, like when you get an itchy palm, that's always weird, isn't it? Getting an itchy palm. That's supposed to be a sign of money coming in or out. I can't remember which is which, but something like if your le left palm is itchy, then it's a sign that money's coming in and you should try and scratch it on some wood. <laughs> One of these weird superstitions. <laughs> Quick, find some wood. I've got an itchy hand. And if your right palm is itchy, then it's money going out and you should leave it or you'll lose money. I can't remember. Something like that. That's another podcast episode, isn't it? So it says, if you struggle to find time during the day, you can wear the trays overnight. But please note, wearing them overnight does not equate to a better whitening result. It does not equate to. It's not equal to. It doesn't mean better whitening results uh, as the gel is usually inactive after a couple of hours. So what I do is I put my trays in when I go to bed and then that's usually around 10, 11 o'clock at night. And my youngest son often wakes me up around one o'clock in the morning. So after I've seen to him and put him back to sleep, then I go to the bathroom and take my trays out. And that works for me because I don't like having them in all night anyway. Then it says, please do not wear the trays overnight if you've recently completed or in the middle of orthodontic treatment, such as Invisalign. Orthodontic treatment is treatment to uh, realign your teeth. So it's using braces or this new method, which is Invisalign, which uses trays to adjust the alignment of your teeth. So if you're doing that, then don't do teeth whitening until that treatment is finished. Here's a fun fact. When I was a, a teenager, I had full, what I call train track braces. So the old fashioned mouthful of metal braces all across the front top and all across the front bottom. Really, you know, metallic, braces. Very, uh, very frustrating. I was, I must have been 16 through to 18 years old, that kind of age. And uh, maybe when I was 19, I had them taken off. And uh, I still now actually have a bar on the inside of my bottom teeth to hold my teeth in place because my teeth, I had overcrowding in my mouth and my teeth were moved so much 
because once the teeth I needed removing were removed, made more space, we realigned my teeth, and then my lower teeth were a little bit loose because there was not enough gum line or something, I don't know. Anyway, they had to put a bar in place to stop my bottom teeth all falling out. <laughs> and I said, how long do I have to have this on? And they said, forever. Which is fine, but I often get food stuck just behind, underneath the back of my bottom teeth. And it's so hard to get the floss, the little interdental brushes, the little brushes that you use to push between your teeth. I have to use them on the front bottom teeth because I can't get floss down because of the bar. It's very hard to get those brushes inside from the bottom up. So when I do get something stuck there, what a nightmare. Anyway, my teeth are still here. So I'm, I'm happy with anything that keeps my teeth in place. So then it says the next morning, or after two hours of whitening, remove the trays. Rinse them in cold water and dry them. Store them in the storage case in a cool, dry place. And then rinse and brush your teeth to remove excess gel, so any extra unneeded gel. And then avoid eating or drinking for two hours after the whitening treatment. Okay, well that's why I kind of do it overnight, it's just more convenient. And then for best results, treatment should go uninterrupted. But if you do miss a day or two, the process can be extended to compensate for the time missed. And it says, finally, in order to obtain the best results, avoid substances such as tea, coffee, red wine, tobacco, and curries, or anything that would stain a white t-shirt. Well, hang on a minute. Now, I have to deal with stained clothing a lot because I've got two young, two young boys who like to spill everything down their tops. And I know that anything that's tomato-based stains their clothes, which is a lot of food. <laughs> that's a lot of things are tomato-based. I love pasta and stews that all have a tomato base. So if I can't eat curry and I can't eat tomato and I can't drink coffee and I can't drink tea and I can't drink wine, because I don't drink white wine, it has to be red wine. Oh, for two weeks. That's terrible. It means having a very bland diet. And this is another reason why at one week I'm stopping because I just need tea and coffee back in my life. Yeah, so you have, to, you have to know your limits. Are you willing to give up those things for a period of time to obtain the best result? Okay, I'm going to finish. I don't, how long have we been going? Oh, over 30 minutes, goodness me. Who would have thought that such a topic would have such length? <laughs> I'm going to end with asking. Teeth whitening is a cosmetic procedure. And often when people talk about having a cosmetic procedure, they think, oh, well, that's vain. That's what vain people do. And that makes me wonder, well, is brushing your hair vain? Because anything you do to your appearance, you're mostly doing it so that you look better, probably because you want other people to like the way you look or to fit in. And then in turn to give you a higher self-esteem. So if whitening your teeth is vain, is brushing your hair vain? Is shaving vain? Because men and women both shave. Is that vain? Making yourself look tidy, clean, fresh, more attractive. Giving yourself a little goatee or a moustache or shaving it all off. Ladies, shaving your underarm or your legs. Is that vain? And where is the line between vanity and simple pride in your appearance? Just wanting to look smart. It's an interesting question, right? Where is that line? When is it just simple vanity? And where is it just pride in appearance? I personally think... 
that having your teeth whitened isn't really a vain thing to do, especially if you're someone who, you know, films themselves a lot and has thousands of people watching and staring at your mouth, especially when you're teaching pronunciation and saying, hey, look at my mouth while I show you how this word is spoken. Let me show you how to form this sound. E. I'm literally putting my teeth on show. And therefore, just like if my car was a show car, I want to make sure they look as clean and fresh as possible. So if my car had terrible paintwork, if the paint had faded, the colour was jaded and the paintwork was scratched and just, you know, needed a refresh, then you'd go and get a fresh lick of paint right? You'd have the paintwork done and you'd clean the car. And, you know, it's the same, it's the same with, with teeth, I think. I think it's just pride and appearance. And I did do a video not long ago about the stereotype of Brits having bad teeth. And quite a few people said, oh, well, you've definitely had work done. You can't talk about Brits having good teeth because you've had work done. You're so fake. And I was like, well, what do you mean by work done? Because yes, I've had lots of hygiene cleans to remove stains. Yes, I had orthodontic treatment to straighten my teeth up. And yes, now I've had teeth whitening done to make them a bit whiter. But I haven't had all my teeth like filed down into pegs and a complete set of fake teeth put on and then even if I did is that such a bad thing if it makes me fit in and makes everyone you know enjoy looking at my teeth and not thinking oh you got a funny set of teeth but going oh she's got nice teeth and if that in turn gives you confidence is that such a bad thing these are things to think about right things to consider so (laughs) I think we've covered enough. If you are still here, if you're not grinding your teeth in frustration with me drawing out this topic, then thank you so much. And I really appreciate your loyalty sticking with me along this journey. There are plenty of other interesting episodes on other things, not teeth related but hopefully that you'll find interesting. So do check out the other episodes of the English Like a Native podcast. Perhaps consider subscribing and then you will hopefully be notified. I don't really know how podcasts work, but you'll be notified when I release a new podcast. Or at least you might see it when you're browsing through your podcast options. So thank you again for joining me. I do hope you found it useful. Until next time, take care. And goodbye.